Sometimes one of the more challenging parts about subtracting mixed numbers is the idea of borrowing. We can avoid having to borrow if we convert our mixed numbers to improper fractions. So let's take a look at an example of this. We'll convert these mixed numbers to improper fractions. So for 12 and 1 fourth, we'll have 4 times 12, that's 48 plus 1. So we'll have 49 fourths. And I'm going to write this vertically. Minus, for 3 and 4 fifths, we'll have 5 times 3, that's 15, plus 4, that's 19 fifths. Now just like any other addition or subtraction problem, we do have to obtain a common denominator, and hopefully we can identify the least common denominator using 4 and 5. The LCD would be 20. So we'll multiply this first fraction by 5 over 5. Notice how that gives us the denominator of 20. We'll multiply the second fraction by 4 over 4, which also gives us the denominator of 20. Now one of the drawbacks of converting to improper fractions is that these products do get much larger. Notice in both cases the denominator is 20, but here the numerator is 49 times 5, which is equal to 245, and here we have 19 times 4, which is equal to 76. Now that we have a common denominator, we can subtract. Denominator stays the same. Our numerator is going to be 245 minus 76, which is equal to 169. So this is the difference of these two mixed numbers, but now we want to convert this back to a mixed number. And since a fraction bar means division, we'll have 169 divided by 20. And there's 8 20s and 169. 8 times 20 is 160. We have a remainder of 9. So this is equal to 8 and 9 twentieths. So by converting these mixed numbers to improper fractions, we can't avoid having to borrow, even though in most cases we have to convert the difference back to a mixed number.